let's begin from where we had earlier left in the chapter. So what is organic farming? Organic farming is a farming system with minimal or no use of chemicals as fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides, etc. And with the maximum input of organic manures, recycled farm wastes that are straw and livestock excreta, use of bioagents such as culture of blue-green algae in preparation of biofertilizers, neem leaves or turmeric, especially in grain storage as biopesticides with healthy cropping systems that are mixed cropping, intercropping and crop rotation. These cropping systems are beneficial in insect, pest and weed control besides providing nutrients. So now let's see irrigation. Most agriculture in India is rain-fed. That is, the success of crops in most area is dependent on timely monsoons and sufficient rainfall spread through most of the growing season. Hence, poor monsoons cause crop failure. Ensuring that the crops get water at the right stages during their growth season can increase the expected yields of any crop. Therefore, many measures are used to bring more and more agricultural land under irrigation. Moving forward, India has a wide variety of water resources and a highly varied climate. Under such conditions, several different kinds of irrigation systems are adopted to supply water to agricultural lands and depending on the kinds of water resources available. These include wells, canals, rivers and tanks. So let's first see wells. There are two types of wells, namely the dug wells and the tube wells. In a dug well, water is collected from water bearing strata. Tube wells can tap water from the deeper strata. From these wells, water is lifted by pumps for irrigation. The second one are the canals. This is usually an elaborate and extensive irrigation system. In this system, canals receive water from one or more reservoirs or from rivers. The main canal is divided into branches having further distributaries to irrigate fields. The third one is the river lift systems. In areas where canal flow is insufficient or irregular due to inadequate reservoir release, the lift system is more rational. Water is directly drawn from the rivers for supplementing irrigation in areas close to river. The last one are the tanks. These are small storage reservoirs which intercept and store runoff of small catchment areas. Moving forward, let's see how cropping patterns improve the food production. Different ways of growing crops can be used to give maximum benefit. Mixed cropping is growing two or more crops simultaneously on same piece of land. Some examples are wheat and gram or wheat and mustard or groundnut and sunflower. This reduces the risk and gives some insurance against failure of one of the crops. Intercropping is growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same field in a definite pattern. A few rows of one crop alternate with few rows of second crop for example soya bean plus maize or finger millet plus cowpea. The crops are selected such that their nutrient requirements are different. This ensures maximum utilization of the nutrients supplied and also prevents pests and diseases from spreading to all the plants belonging to one crop in a field. This way, both crops can give better returns. The picture here shows alternating rows of different crops that are grown in a field. The growing of different crops on a piece of land in a pre-planned succession is known as crop rotation. Depending upon the duration, crop rotation is done for different crop combinations. The availability of moisture and irrigation facilities decide the choice of crop to be cultivated after one harvest. If crop rotation is done properly, then two or three crops can be grown in a year with good harvests. The next topic that comes is crop protection management. Field crops are infested by a large number of weeds, insects, pests and diseases. If weeds and pests are not controlled at the appropriate time, they can damage the crops so much that most of the crop will be lost. Weeds are unwanted plants in the cultivated field, for example, Xanthium, Parthenium, Cyperinus rotundus, 
etc. They compete for food, space and light. And as a result, the original crop is lost. Weeds take up nutrients and reduce the growth of crop. Therefore, removal of weeds from cultivated fields during the early stages of crop growth is essential for good harvest. Generally, insect pests attack the plants in three ways. These are the first one, they cut the root, stem and leaf. The second one, they suck the cell sap from various parts of the plant. And the third one, they bore into stem and fruits. Thus, they affect the health of crop and reduce yields. Diseases in plants are caused by pathogens such as bacteria, fungi and viruses. These pathogens can be present in and transmitted through the soil, water and air. Weeds, insects and diseases can be controlled by various methods. One of the most commonly used method is the use of pesticides, which includes herbicides, insecticides and fungicides. These chemicals are sprayed on the crop plants or used for treating seeds and soil. However, excessive use of these chemicals create problems since they can be poisonous to many plant and animal species and cause environmental pollution. Weed control methods also include mechanical removal. Preventive methods such as proper seed bed preparation, timely sowing of crops, intercropping and crop rotation also help in weed control. Some other preventive measures against Pests are the use of resistant varieties and summer plowing in which fields are plowed deep in summer to destroy weeds and pests. The main concern after the grains are grown is the storage of grains. Storage losses in agricultural produce can be very high. Factors responsible for such losses are biotic which includes insects, rodents, fungi, mites and bacteria and abiotic which includes inappropriate moisture and temperatures in the place of storage. These factors cause degradation in quality, loss in weight and poor germinability, discoloration of produce all leading to poor marketability. These factors can be controlled by proper treatment and by systematic management of warehouses. Preventive and control measures are used before grains are stored for further use. They include strict cleaning of produce before storage, proper drying of the produce first in sunlight and then in shade, and fumigation using chemicals that can kill pests. Moving forward, we are now into the second topic of this chapter, the animal husbandry. Animal husbandry is the scientific management of animal livestock. It includes various aspects such as feeding, breeding and disease control. Animal-based farming includes cattle, goat, sheep, poultry and fish farming. As the population increases and as living standards increase, the demand for milk, eggs and meat is also going up. Also, the growing awareness of the need of humane treatment of livestock has brought in new limitations in livestock farming. Thus, livestock production also needs to be improved. The first topic that comes under animal husbandry is the cattle farming. Cattle husbandry is done for two purposes, for milk and for drought labor for agricultural work such as tilling, irrigation and carting. Indian cattle belong to two different species, Bos indicus that are cows and Bos bubalis that are buffaloes. Milk producing females are called milch animals that are dairy animals while the one used for farm labor are called the drought animals. Milk production depends to some extent on the duration of lactation period, meaning the period of milk production after the birth of a calf. So, milk production can be increased by increasing the lactation period. Exotic or foreign breeds, for example Jersey and Brown Swiss are selected for long lactation periods, while local breeds, for example Red Sindhi and Sahiwal, show excellent resistance to diseases. These two species can be crossbred to get animals with both the desired qualities that are long lactation periods and excellent resistance to diseases. Proper cleaning and shelter facilities for cows and buffaloes are required for humane farming 
and for the health of animals and for protection of clean milk as well. Animals require regular brushing to remove dirt and loose hair. They should be sheltered under well-ventilated roofed sheds that protect them from rain, heat and cold. The floor of the cattle shed needs to be sloping so as to stay dry and facilitate cleaning. Food requirements of dairy animals are of two types. The first one is maintenance requirement which is the food required to support the animal to live a healthy life. And the second is milk producing requirement which is the type of food required during the lactation period. The animal feed includes roughage which is largely fiber and concentrates which are low in fiber and contain relatively high levels of proteins and other nutrients. Cattle need balanced rations containing all nutrients in proportionate amounts. Besides such nutritious food material, certain feed additives containing micronutrients promote the health and milk output of dairy animals. Also, cattle suffer from a number of diseases. The diseases besides causing death reduce the milk production. A healthy animal feeds regularly and has normal posture. The parasites of cattle may be both external parasites as well as internal parasites. The external parasites live on the skin and mainly causes skin diseases. The internal parasites like worms affect stomach and intestine while flukes damage the liver. Infectious diseases are also caused by bacteria and viruses. Vaccination are given to farm animals against many more viral and bacterial diseases. With this, I end the second video on the chapter. Thank you. In the next chapter, we will continue with poultry farming.